What's up guys, it's me Jeremy. With the major differences between competitive play and solo queue, there's a lot of really powerful champions that often get passed up, simply because they aren't played due to some weaknesses at the competitive level. But I personally love to look at these champions, because there are some really strong picks that have an extremely low chance of being nerfed. Anyways, let's get started. As we go through part 2 of champions that are good in solo queue but suck at the LCS level, the main thing to keep in mind is why a champion might be able to be like this, and it comes down to multiple factors. The first being champion difficulty. The fact that a champion is easy to play is a huge advantage for solo queue, which is simply just not the case at the competitive level. Also, many champions have huge weaknesses that require team coordination and a high level of skill from your opponents to punish properly, and so you can take advantage of the uncoordinated teams in solo queue since they won't be able to punish you effectively. This type of difficult to perform counterplay tends to completely destroy a champion, but is so incredibly difficult to pull off that you really can just completely throw it out the window in solo queue, and so you get left with a really strong champion. Now, the first champion that does well in solo queue but sucks in competitive play is Amumu. Now, Amumu can really get punished for his weak early game by a coordinated invade, however, in solo queue, players really really suck at invading and just level 1s in general, and so even if you do get invaded and get your buff stolen, 90% of the time or even more, you can easily just trade buffs back and take an advantage somewhere else on your opponent. And on the other side, Amumu's kit is just absolutely fantastic for solo queue. His ganks are really really solid and his clear speed is definitely really good too. But the most important thing is his team fighting which is just absolutely insane. The radius on his ultimate is just so big, and the range on his bandage toss is just so long, that it's so easy to just walk up to your opponents and just go in and start a fight really just anytime you want to, which is really really good for solo queue, because having this kind of initiation is amazing since most team fights are decided by the initiation anyways, and teams tend to be really solid at following up a Mumu on fights, so it makes team fighting fairly easy to coordinate. Overall his team fight presence and fantastic ganks, especially when he hits level 6, has caused Mumu to constantly be in the top 10 win rate champions for solo queue, hovering around a very solid 55% for the past few seasons in fact. The next champion is actually Annie, but not Annie support who gets played all the time at the competitive level. That's right, it's Annie mid. Or heck, you could even go top if you had a good matchup and if you wanted to. Annie suffers a lot at the competitive level due to her extreme vulnerability to ganks due to fairly low ranges and a complete lack of mobility. However, in solo queue that's not as big of a deal, since you can pretty much avoid it through proper warding and reasonable positioning, and even then you can still sometimes potentially even turn ganks. And on the other hand, Annie mid is actually absolutely fantastic, and she's one of the only champions left in the game that can easily one-shot people with a full burst combo when she's not fed. With flash initiations, Annie mid can easily blow up teamfights, and if a couple of squishy targets group up or overextend, you can really just melt them down, and because of that her kit punishes bad players really really effectively. The burst you get on Annie is just so insane, and it's something that players really just don't expect, and so your playmaking and pick potential is just so incredibly high. Annie mid actually sits at a deceptively high win rate of around 54% in solo queue, and this is actually because the win rate of Annie support is only around 48% in solo queue, so the win rate of Annie mid gets hidden quite a lot by the fact that it's not as popular of a pick as Annie support. And lastly, the third pick we have is actually Riven. Now, despite the stereotypes and all of the negative connotations behind Riven as a champion, she's actually really, really strong. She suffers in competitive play due to counterplay mechanics such as kiting and crowd control, but in solo queue, with arguably the best mobility in the entire game due to having no mana costs, as well as having very high burst and crowd control, Riven becomes a really, really powerful force. Her snowballing potential is just insane, and if you get fed, it's really easy to just solo carry the entire game due to the tools on her kit, and teamfights become quite easy to wreck with a flank, even if you're not that strong. Her outplay potential, as well as just her pick potential in general, is just massive. Her laning phase is really, really strong too, and even if you fall behind in lane, you can still do a great job of kiting for your team and focusing the tanks. Her win rate suffers kind of a lot due to the really high tendency of Riven mains to be toxic and AFK, but if 
if you're a Riven player who does not do those things, she has so much potential as a champion and is really, really strong. Anyways, that's going to be it. Be sure to stay tuned for part 3. My name is Jeremy, and that's from my video on champions that are good in solo queue but suck in competitive play. Hey guys, it's me, Jeremy. Thanks for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, definitely make sure to hit that like button so I can tell, and if you're interested, definitely check me out on all the socials, of which you can see over there. And if you really enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe for some more awesome content in the future, as well as you can check out some of my other videos up here and over there. Anyways, that's going to be it. Thank you so much for watching, and of course, I'll see you guys next time.